Hi, I'm Alan Aitken and welcome to The Winning Factor. This is the show where we're looking for that key element of a race that decides the result, but we're trying to find it before the race, not after. Well, the first race we're going to look at on Sunday is race four, the class five, and the winning factor here is the conversion rate. Now, this is a class five, so there are no stars here, but for me, that makes class five races a great betting proposition. The horses that interest me most here are Chaparral Star, having his first run for Casper Founds, and we've already seen on this show how that's a strong angle. Exponents, who missed the jump badly as a favourite first up this season, so we can overlook that run. And Golden Cannon, fitter for one race back from the break, and he's the horse we're going to concentrate on. First of all, we're going to have a look at the barriers that he's had since he ran on this day last year. He had barrier one on that occasion and ran second. And since then, you'll see he's had mostly bad barriers throughout last season. He still raced well, he still won two races. He finally got a good draw first up for this season, but as we're going to see in a moment, it wasn't really a help to him because he needed the race. Now, Golden Cannon didn't trial before he resumed this season, and that shows in this race. He's very fresh. You can see he's fighting the rider, he's throwing his head around. Now, this is something he normally does a little bit of anyway, but he was much worse on this occasion, and I think it was being too fresh without that trial. As you can see, he looms in the straight as a chance and then peaks on his run. And I think he'll be fitter after that race. As you can see on the map here, he gets an inside draw again. This time he should be able to take up a position just off the speed on the inside. And that should lead into him getting a trouble-free effort into the straight and his chance to score. Now, as I said, Chaparral Star is a very interesting rival here, having his first run for Casper Founds. And we're going to get a good look at them horse against horse here when they met at the end of last season. On this occasion, Golden Cannon raced directly outside Chaparral Star the whole race. As you can see on the circle here, he's four wide around him as Chaparral Star gets some cover three wide on his inside. Now that made things tougher for Golden Cannon, but as you can see, they get down to the line and there's nothing between them. So there's plenty of form guide evidence alone just to support Golden Cannon being a horse to beat here. But now we're going to look at the crucial factor, the winning factor in my conclusion, and that's the conversion rate. Now conversion rates are what I call the ability of trainers, the strike rate of trainers with horses that have just run second, third or fourth at their last start. Normally we would expect these are the horses that are in form or coming into form and ready to win, and certain trainers are better at converting that run into a win than others. As we look at the table here on the screen, we'll see the top four trainers with their conversion rate horses, horses that have just run second, third and fourth, and this is their strike rate, their ability to get that horse to win at the next time of asking. It's headed by Frankie Law after that great season he had in his single season to date, but also trainers like John Size, Danny Shum, and there's Francis Lloyd, the trainer of Golden Cannon. These guys are very good at turning a good run into a next start win. So our tip in race four, the class five, is Golden Cannon, and our winning factor, the conversion rate. We'll see if Francis Loy can keep up that excellent work at turning a good run into a winning run. The other race we're going to look at for Sunday is race nine. This one's on the dirt, and the winning factor here is the draw. Now we look down the field here, and I think a lot of punters will look at this race, look at these horses and go, oh, there's King Genki, responsible for a fantastic run at his last start over an insufficient distance. And I think most punters will land on him as the likely winner of the race. But we're going to dig a little bit deeper than just a good run. But first, we're going to show you that. Now this is over 1,200 metres on the dirt. It's a little bit short for him, but he has a very tough run on the outside here in the white colours and just keeps going. It's a terrific effort. He had every right to drop out, but he didn't and now he goes to a more suitable 1650 metres. Now last season, Tony Cruz was only able to get five runs into King Genki, who had various foot problems at different times of the year and missed a lot of the season. As a result, his form suffered in those runs and he dropped down again to class three. To find his last win, we actually have to go back to May of 2017, when he put together back-to-back -to -back wins over the dirt mile for Zach Purton and then Douglas White. Now we're going to have a look at the uh, replays of those races in two different stages. First we're going to look at how the race panned out 
from the 800 metres on. Now at this stage, uh, in each case, King Genki's made his way to the front and he breaks up the field rounding the circle from the 800 metres, kicks away and is too tough to run down. The second time is basically a carbon copy. When Douglas White replaced Zach Purton this time, did the same thing, found his way to the front, kicked away at the 800, King Genki was too strong. Now what you didn't see there, but we're gonna show you now, is the initial stages of the race. And this, this will come back to our winning factor. Now you'll note in the first 200 metres each time, first with Zach Purton and then with Douglas White, he has to be very hard ridden King Genki to get to the front. It's not just a simple matter of him bouncing out and finding the lead, he really has to be pushed along. Now on Sunday, Victor Wong takes the ride and Victor is a young jockey with some promise. But at this stage, he isn't Zach Purton or Douglas White. So his job to get the win is mainly going to happen at the start, I believe. If he finds his way to the front, he's going to be controlling the race from there and very tough to beat. And I think what's going to help him over that first 200 metres is that there isn't a great deal of speed around him. If we have a look at the map here, the draw is vital. He's got horses around him like Imperial Concord, Hang's Decision and Penang Hall, none of whom are noted for their early speed. So that should enable Victor to get the horse out of the gates, get him to that clear lead, and I think if he can do that, he's going to deserve the short price favouritism that he'll probably have. So the tip in race nine is King Genki, our winning factor, a draw that should allow Victor Wong to get him out of the gates, get that front position, and he's gonna to be tough to run down from there. That's it for the winning factor this week. See you next time.